Hello everyone. Let me get this straight here. Oh, I hope everyone's blessed today. Um, I'm here with a message called Achieving God's Heart. And it's something that God has been walking um, out in my life and showing me. And it's been such a deep, deep blessing to have my heart transferred into the heart of God and to show me like these inner chambers of the heart of God. One that you don't, God doesn't want us to look at his heart. He wants us to see those inner chambers so that we can, we can share his pure divine love um, on this earth. God does not want us to be instruments of destruction. He wants us to be weapons of righteousness. And so, as he's been uh, sharing his heart with me and taking me into these new places, it's been such a cleansing. It's such a cleansing. And I just can't help but share it with everyone because it is the heart of God. And, you know, uh, walking through life, walking through life, we all cannot help but be hurt. And we've all been there. We've been hurt. We've been betrayed. We've been talked about. We've been stepped on. We've been neglected. We've been rejected. But guess what? All those things that I just said, Jesus was too. And so if you will learn to um, go through these trials and persecutions like Jesus, um, I believe that you will have victory like you've never known. And not only will you have victory like you've never known, you will also please God. And you'll be useful to him. You'll be a beautiful piece in his home, and his house to show off. And um, I believe there's a great move of God right on the cusp right now. And he's looking for those who's let their hearts be made pure. Whose hearts have been broken so that he can remake them. We've just got to let him. Just If we would just seek God and get in the secret place with Jesus, he will begin to share this with you. So I pray that you're able to receive it, that you have the anointing to receive it. And I pray, pray for me that I have the anointing to deliver this. Um, you know, I've been talked about, not literally, but spit on, you know, called a demon, called all these terrible things. I've been judged. Um, <laughs> um, and at the time, it did not feel good. Um, you know, I felt misunderstood, you know, uh, you don't know my heart, you know, Jesus, I mean, imagine Jesus came with this message that was beautiful and it was salvation to everyone and still people called him a demon. And so in this time, uh, Jesus began to tell me you're sharing in my sufferings, you're sharing in my sufferings. The Bible says we're going to do that. And so as I began to really, really focus on sharing the sufferings of Jesus, it began to cleanse me of my need to please man, of feeling rejected by men. And I began to have this kinship that I really don't have words to explain to you with Jesus, where um, I felt what he went through in certain aspects. And it was just this kinship where it was like, wow, your heart was broken and, and you were hurting because you just, you had, you, you, you were good. And, 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 and no one could, could recognize this, but instead of, of turning and lashing out, you could have, you could have smote everyone instead of lashing out. You gave more love. You gave more grace. You crawled up on a cross. And while we were yet sinners, you died for us. And that's the point of this message today is we're all still working this thing out. And what this is what I need you to remember. Please don't forget this. This is a Holy Spirit teaching. What your neighbor is struggling with and what they might have even used to stab you with. First of all, the battle is not of the flesh. It's a spiritual battle and they have demons they're fighting. And so we have to get to the place where we look through the eyes of Jesus, which are the eyes of grace and which are the eyes of mercy and that wants to transform these people. And as I always say, the Bible says to pray for your enemies. In Matthew 5, we're going to go there in a second. In Matthew 5, it says pray and love your enemies. Maybe God lets you see the other people because that's your assignment. That's your assignment of love. That's your assignment of grace. 
to pray for these people, not a place of smiting them and not a place of showing them what, give them what they deserve, Jesus, so they will change. Because you know what? I did something yesterday that displeased the Lord. And is that how he treated me? Did he say, smite that girl, Father? Get her, get her, show her, with, show her, let's show her. No. Jesus Christ it is on the right hand of the Father right this instant. And he's interceding for me. And he's interceding for you. And you know what I believe he's saying? Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. <laughs> and so, if we will get to that place and ask Jesus, hey, I see this now. Get me to this place where my heart sees my enemies. And it says not, get them, God. Because what? When we do that, who do we sound like? Who's the first person who says, I want to bring judgment to God's children? I want to see judgment for God's children. Satan. And we do not want to be like the accuser of our souls. We want to be like Jesus who says, oh God, I see, I see the ugly. And I know I'm not pure yet. I'm not purified yet. Help us, Lord. Help them, Lord. It comes from a place of mercy that we must pray. I know what it's like for years. I've been living for God for 13 years. And I'm just getting this in this pure form. And it's amazing and it's freeing. And it's the truth that when people hurt your flesh, respond in spirit. Respond in the heart of God. And you will not only see yourself transformed. You will see them transformed. Because if there's any inkling inside of us that wants to see those people hurting or suffering, or that's not of God. Because he knows, looking down, that he's praying for you to be forgiven right now. His blood's covering you. He's at the mercy seat. And so are we. And so for us to pray out of a place of bitterness and anger and wrath, it's not of Jesus. And it's not of, we're not his children when we're acting like that. That's not how his children act. His children have learned from him. They've taken in the heart of God. They've accepted the grace. So when we accept the grace, how can we not shed it to others? Now, believe me, I know this is not the easiest message to walk out. Believe me, because we're robed in this flesh. And it hurts when somebody hurts you. But if we will let God... If we will just get in the presence, I have gotten this message more and more. The more I get in the presence with Jesus, in his presence, the closer I get to him, the more I feel like him. And it's such a pure, pure place. And I believe for those of us who are saying, for everyone who's saying, I want more of God. I want to see God get glory in my life. I want to see the Bible glorified. I want to see the signs and wonders and miracles. I want to lay hands on the sick and they recover to give God glory. I believe that he will not allow this until our hearts are purified. It, it, it would destroy us. You know, let me read you Matthew 5. This is God's heart. Matthew 5, 43 through 48. You have heard what it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That's Old Testament. But I tell you, love your enemies and those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father in heaven. See, that's what God's kids do. That's what his children do. For he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward will you have? That's easy to do. Don't even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing out of the ordinary? Don't even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. This is the perfected love. The perfected love where we are like Jesus. Where we are like Jesus. And I believe if we will get to this place, God, there's nothing God won't do in your life. There's nothing he won't use you to do. I mean, it's unlimited. 
what God wants to do with hearts who've been purified and who love with the heart of Jesus. Um, you know, for years I'd, I'd read a scripture and this is just, I want to give you a few things that God put on my mind. Uh, there's a scripture in Proverbs, uh, 25 and 22, and it repeats it in Romans, uh, 12, 20 through 21. So I'm going to go to the Romans one and I'm going to read that and I want to show you what God showed me. It's awesome. Okay. Um, Romans 12, 20. <laughs> For it is written, vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. But, okay, but, that's where 20 starts. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. If that doesn't cut your flesh, <laughs> I understand. I've been talked about. I've been stabbed to death. I get it. And I want to be better. Amen? Say amen with me. Amen? Do you want that? Yes. But listen, for in doing so, you will be heaping fiery coals on his head. Okay. Now that doesn't sound like the Jesus I'm talking about, correct? I always read that and I said, okay, God, you're telling me to have peace with men and mercy and grace and love my enemy. But then you're saying pray for him so that they'll have fiery coals dumped on their head. That that kind of counterproductive there. I'm supposed to look at them with love, but I'm praying for the fiery coals to fall on their head. How does that work? <laughs> you know, it sounds like I'm I'm um, I'm praying for wrath here, and I just that doesn't feel right. Well, recently God showed me exactly what He meant. You right? You ready? You ready? Yeah, you ready? Okay, so let me read it one more time. For in doing so, you will be heaping fiery coals on your enemy's head. All right. Now, I want y'all to go to Isaiah. Six, five through eight. Check this out. This is Isaiah. He's a prophet. He was seeing God in the temple. He was in the throne room of God. And he says, Woe is me, for I am ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips. He had sin in his life. And live among the people of unclean lips, because my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. The one, then one of the seraphim, it's the angels, flew to me, and in his hand was a glowing coal that he had taken from the altar with tongs. Oh, that's goodness right there. He touched my mouth with it, and he said, now that this has touched your lips, your wickedness is removed. Your sin is atoned for. And then I heard the voice of the Lord say, who should I send? Who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. <laughs> oh my God, do you hear that? If you will pray for your enemies, God will take the coals of the altar in the throne room of God. And he will remove the wickedness. <laughs> And he will atone for their sins. <laughs> and we can't have that happen for them if we're siding with the accuser. The Bible talks about in Revelation 12 that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. And he stands there day and he stands there night. And he accuses us of our sins before the Lord. And he's trying to get the Lord to judge. And he's trying to say, look what they're doing. Look what they're doing. Look what they're doing. I'm going to suffer. They're going to suffer. <laughs> oh, God. And God says, no. Do not join. Do not be a witness in the courts of heaven for the accuser. He's standing there trying to prosecute my people. Do not testify for him. Do not say, God, they're doing this and they're doing that. Because you know what you're doing? You're being a witness for Satan himself. And not only does that hurt the people that you are praying for who God loves and wants to purify, but you're hurting yourself because you're partnering with Satan. This is so powerful. This is the message for the church today. When we hate our enemies, we join with Satan. It's undeniable. It's undeniable. Satan, in the beginning, 
He saw those that Jesus loves, saw those that the Lord God loves. And he says, I can't stand it that I suffer. They got to suffer too. And I'm going to do everything I can to see to it that they go to hell and that they suffer what they deserve. I'm going to see to it. And anytime we have wrath in our hearts, that is our partner. We're partnering with Satan himself. Recognize it. Recognize it. Let all eyes be opened in Jesus' name and cleansed by the coals of the altar. We must not partner with the enemy any longer. It is dangerous for them. It is dangerous for us. Our partner is the Holy Spirit, the same one who cleanses us, the same one who shows us mercy. How can we hold hands with Jesus, who shows us mercy every day in our shortcomings? How can we honestly hold hands with that one while pointing a finger and wanting judgment? For another. Do you see it? Do you see it? I'm asking you all. Share this message. The church needs it. There are plenty of them. Plenty of us. Let's be honest with ourselves. It's not everybody but me. It's all of us that fail. And we have the gall. To ask God. To make another suffer. When Jesus is up there praying for our forgiveness, he's interceding to the Father saying, forgive them. That was Jesus' words for those who were literally having him killed. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And we have this hatred boiling under the surface where we want to see others suffer. And we're supposed to be in unity and we're supposed to be in perfect love. In the New Testament, there was a divine love that caused them to walk in such a manner that they would give up homes and land to love their brothers. And I promise you, those brothers and sisters weren't perfect. They overlooked it because they knew their own sin. This is a message of heaven. This is a clarion call. This is a clarion call for everyone. How? How can we want people to come to God? How can we people want people to come to his church while our fingers are pointed out saying, you are a sinner. Get right. We've got rocks in our hands. We've got rocks in our hands and we're ready to stone at a moment's notice. And Jesus is standing over there. And he says, I don't recognize you. I don't recognize you. Because he who, without, who is without sin shall cast the first stone. I wish that they would go and sin no more, but they can only do that for developing a heart for me. Okay? You can't cause someone to fall in love with Jesus from day one. You have to learn to love Jesus. You have to get to know Jesus. And you certainly can't do it while you're threatening people and putting these ugly walls up that nobody wants to be associated with and wants nothing to do with. But guess what? We're the hands and feet. And if they can see the love of Christ in us, then they'll want more. And they'll say, wait a minute. This Jesus is not ready to stone me at a moment's notice. Every couple minutes, he's not ready to stone me. But he says, baby, come back. Let's do it better this time. That's okay. As long as you return, let's do it better this time. Honestly, we all fall. How does it make you feel if you stumble and somebody says, I see what you did. That was terrible. That was terrible. But what does it feel like when somebody says, oh, man, 
I understand. I fall too, man. But God, but God, his goodness calls us to repentance. And we have to be that same goodness that calls men to repentance. That says, you know what? I had such and such going on. That's what it says. Admit your sins one to another. Why do you think it says that? So you can be shamed? Is God a God of shame? No. He says, admit your sins one to another. You know why? Because the, you can sharpen each other and you can edify each other. You can pull each other up out of the dirt and say, don't worry about that. You 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 tell God you're sorry. It's done. It's, it's forgiven. If you have a sorry heart, I don't even think you have to completely like throw it out there. If you, God knows, I you have a repentant heart. I'm changing from this. Because you know why? God sees in the spirit realm what we don't see. It says that the battle is not flesh and blood, but it's with the principalities and powers, the dark forces of the air. God sees the demonic attacking people. He sees that demon on your head. He sees that team of demons that's beating you up and holding your mouth or causing you to, to sin. He sees it. And he says, that's not my baby. My baby's under there. And I love her. And I want her. Give her a chance. Will somebody pray for her? Will somebody lift her up? Will somebody? Will somebody? Will that be you? Will that be you? This is so God. This is him. This is his heart. Please share this video. I don't ever beg y'all to share this video, but please share this video. It's got to, it's got to get out. There's so many, it's so easy for us to get in our churches and our, our gatherings and our assemblies and our groups and our cliques. And we begin to talk and we begin to think we're all that. And we begin to judge. That's the flesh. That's that Satan in us. That seed of Satan that's in us. That, that wants to feel better about ourselves for making others feel worse. We've got to get to the place and we will if we seek the heart of God. If you let him know this is important to me, I must get this. This is of utmost important. Let everything else fall away. I'll never speak another word if I'm not sharing your heart. This is the message. Perfect love casts out fear. Those people will have nothing to fear if you show them perfect love and then they are cleansed by the coals of the altar. And they will be atoned for. So we've got to understand we must have grace. God showed us much grace and, and where much sin abounds, grace abounds. I'm not telling you to go out there and tell people it's okay to sin. It's okay by all means, don't ever do that. You just pull them up higher. You don't have to push people down. To you have you can't pull people up by pushing them down. You got to pull them up. You got to call out the gold that's buried in the dirt. You got to tell them God has something for you and this ain't it. You're going other places with God. He's right there. He wants to forgive you. We act as if God doesn't want to forgive people. He says, hold on a second. I shed my blood for that person. They didn't put me on that cross. I climbed up on that cross. And I suffered for not only you, but everyone else. And I want every single person to come to repentance. And if my church will be a church of love and mercy and grace, you will carry my heart and the world will be changed. We want to treat people like lepers when Jesus pulled the leper close and showed love and compassion. Compassion, compassion is God's key. Compassion says, yep, I understand. I'm a sinner too. And God's still working on me. I'm made new, but I'm not perfected yet. But I want to be. I want God's heart and he wants it for you and he wants it for me. And let's go get this together. Let's support each other together, not tear each other down. Now, let me tell you, I'm going to say it again. I know this is not an easy message. I know when you got enemies, it hurts. It hurts the flesh. It hurts the heart. But it hurt Jesus too. Every lash hurt. 
every every accusation was not fun. Can you imagine being the savior of the world? The savior of the world, which is, that's not us. <laughs> that was him. He was it. And everybody hating you for it. And you end up dead for it. And he says it was worth it. It's worth it. God's got me to a place where there's people that's hurt me. And he's showing me one by one. And he's making me desire to go after them in love. And that's exciting to me because I'm like, this is something totally new and I know it's not me. And I know it pleases you, God. Thank you for taking me to the maybe the hardest place I've ever gone is to love my enemies. Jesus, the hardest thing he ever did was go on that cross. It was so hard. He said, Father, could, this, could we not go this route? <laughs> could we like do this maybe some other way? The flesh cried out because it was afraid to be hurt. And then he said, he knew he got his answer from God. No, this is the way. And he says, all right, not my will, but yours. And he went forward. And I believe that's what he's calling us to do is just say, okay, yeah, they're going to come. And when they come, I'll, I mean, you can almost make a game out of it. Let me see how I can outlove them. Let me see how much I can forgive them. Right? Instead of saying, okay, well, they did this, they did that. Stop for a moment, refocus on the heart of Jesus and say, how can I overcome this with grace? Let me, let grace abound over this situation. And you will have a victory for God. People won't be able to explain it, but say, that is the heart of God. And you, instead of pushing your enemies away, and giving them more to talk about because nobody's ever coming together if there's opposition. You will cause them to say, now that, that is the heart of God. And I want to learn from it. Seriously. That's where it's at, guys. That's where it's at. So, last but not least, I want to tell you something else. It's just a little tidbit right on the edge of this message. I want you to forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Because that accuser not only talks about others, but he talks about you in here, in here, all up in your spirit, man. He's trying to tell you, you know, you did this, you did that, you're not worthy. You're so far from God. He don't want you now. You fail him all the time. That voice, that's the enemy. And God says, put your eyes on me, child. I've never stopped loving you. I loved you before you were born. I loved you up on that cross before you were ever born. When you made your bed in hell, I met you there. So I want you to forgive yourself. Don't let the enemy have any of this ground. Make it a pure ground. Let there be seeds of love planted everywhere you go. There's only one way to overcome hate, and that is with love. You don't overcome hate with hate. Love changes hate. Love is supernatural. Hate is the absence of love. So, I pray that you get a hold of this, that we all get a hold of this and keep growing in it because I just believe that there's no stopping the kingdom of God inside of you if you will let God have your heart in this matter if you will just let God overtake your heart in grace there's no stopping us God will have his glory through us once again please share this message this is a message to God's house this is a message to those not even in God's house yet who are coming the church loves you you're going to make it and you're going to do better and better and better because God wants you. Because God is on your side and God said, I'll fight your battles with you and for you. I wanted you on that cross and I want you still. So, all right, you guys, be blessed. I love you. Jesus loves you.